Okay, so let's get into phonology. Um, phonology can be broken down into phonemes, and phonemes represent the smallest, most meaningful sound units in a language. Um, and these are basically the distinctive sound units that make a difference when sounds form words. So in English, uh, we have 26 letters in the alphabet, but we actually have more than 40 sounds um, that make up uh, our language. Uh, here's some examples. Um, how many phonemes, right, individual sounds, are represented in the word shape? So if we say it slowly, sh-a-p. So there's actually three phonemes. Um, S and H, even though those letters, there are two letters there, S and H together represent one sound, sh, and then we have A, and then P, and that P sound uh, is represented by two letters, P and E. How about patch? How many phonemes in the word patch? So we have P, A, CH, so that would be three, two. How about in the word patience? And the key to this is to say it slowly to yourself, breaking up each individual sound. So patience would be p, a, sh, e, n, s. Okay, let's do it again. P, a, sh, e, n, s. Patience. So it actually has six phonemes. Okay. Um, and uh, let's talk about, so as I explained to you before, that S and H represent one sound. So does the P and the E, right? P, we don't, represent, we don't um, sound out that ending E in shape. In patch, you actually have the T, the C, and the H that represent one sound, CH. Um, and so this is why it calls, we call for phonetic transcription in phonology. Let's look more into that. So the basic idea of phonetic transcription is to represent speech as a sequence of segments or with an alphabet, right? The problem is, if we use the English alphabet, we're not going to be able to represent the different sounds in different ways. Um, so this is because some letters represent more than one different sound. So let's look at the word, let's look at the letter C here. Notice that recall and receive both have the letter C when it, in the spelling. But this sound in recall is K. And the C in the word receive represents the sound S. So it's problematic that we have the same symbol but different sounds. Um, same thing with gear and siege, right? G, Z. Two different sounds. Sometimes in English, some letters represent no sounds at all. So um, you saw, for example, in the word shape, um, that E at the end is not represented by a sound. Same thing with these examples here, right? Receive, that E in the end, is not represent a, does not really represent a sound. Same thing with use. Also sometimes, two letters represent just one, sh one sound. Uh, we saw that in shape, with the S and the H representing one sound, sh. We also saw it with patch, uh, T, C, and H representing one sound, ch. Um, and here's some other examples. Recall with double L, even though it's one sound, l. And then phonetics with P and H representing that one sound, f. Um, also, we have some letters in English that represent two or more sounds at once. For example, in the word tax, how many phonemes in that word? Let's say it out together. A -k -s. So that X letter actually represents two sounds, k -s, right, to make up tax. Um, same thing with use. We start with E and then we go with U, use. Um, so that U letter actually represents two sounds. And the other um, difficulty with using the English alphabet for phonetic transcription is that the same sound can be represented by many different letters. So for example, the sound in sh can be sh, can be represented by two s's, like in mission. It can be represented by a ch, like in machine, uh, a ci, like in special, or a ti, like in caution. 
Um, so this doesn't really meet our needs when we're trying to transcribe something uh, in a way that tells a person exactly how to say it. So what, we, what do we do? The solution is to use a phonetic alphabet. Um, and in a phonetic alphabet, the sounds and the symbols have a one-to-one -one relationship to each other, which means that each symbol represents one sound, um, and each sound has its own unique individual symbol. So um, this use, uh, this phonetic alphabet uh, is what is used for phonetic transcription, um, and you can actually see phonetic transcription when you look up uh, words in the dictionary, um, and I'll show you that in a moment. So our phonetic uh, alphabet of choice is called the International Phonetic Alphabet, or for short, IPA. Um, and um, I'll show you some of the symbols of this, of this, uh, this website too. For a moment, let me show you um, some phonetic transcriptions of words. Um, so if you go, if you open up the internet and type in any word, you, we will type in phonology. And I will put definition because Google has this great tool um, uh, that gives you the definition of every any word. Notice this part right here, right? Phonology. And if you were to sound it out, phonology. It says it for you. So this transcription right here um, that begins and ends with the two slashes, that's actually that's the International Phonetic Alphabet. And you can find that um, for any word, which means that once you've learned the sound symbol um, combination, uh, once you know the sound that each symbol represents, you will be able to read and sound out any word in the English uh, language and any other language, actually. Um, so let me show you this website. Um, it is a website that um, tells you about the manner, place, and articulation. This is something that you're going to use a lot, especially for uh, your assignment A, the oral language uh, analysis. So click on this link. It's going to bring you to this page. Um, what I want need you to do is click on the free web apps here link and click on English. It'll take you to a new page. And we're going to learn about these in a few minutes, but basically, if you click on one of these, it'll show you the IPA, the uh, phonetic transcription of the different sounds. And so this happens to be the sound pa. Uh, as in happy. And so what's really nice about this website is that it'll give you the transcription and the re and uh, remember that you can tell if it's IPA or the phonetic alphabet if it begins and ends with a slash. Okay, um, and so that symbol represents the sound. Um, for example, this symbol represents the sound. G. And then there's others that are not really um, similar to our English alphabet. Um, such as this sound and symbol, right? So take note of that symbol. That's the symbol that you would use to represent this sound. Okay, and we'll come back. We'll come back to this website um, as we go further. Okay, so um, phonemes can be divided into vowels and consonants. First, let's talk about vowels. Um, so in English, uh, we have um, 14 different vowel sounds. However, we only have five vowel letters, right, um, that look like this. The A, the E, the I, um, the O, and the U. However, if you take that first symbol, the A letter, right, the A symbol, um, that symbol actually has many different sounds connected to it, right? So here's some example. Eight. Here you see that same symbol, right? Same symbol right there, but now we say bat. So now the sound here is a versus a. Above is a versus a versus a. And then ka, so you have a, 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 a. And all of those sounds are connected to that one symbol. This is very different to other languages um, and I'm going to use Spanish as an example, um, that have a much closer uh, relationship between the sounds and the symbols. So in Spanish, 
they only have five vowel sounds and five vowel letters. Same as in English, A, E, I, O, and U for the letters, for the symbols. Um, but in Spanish, they also have less vowel sounds. So, uh, we have A in carro, A in manzana, A in buscar, A in abierto, right? So, all of those sounds, A, 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 and A, are the same. Um, and that's very different to English, um, because in English, we have to understand that that symbol has many different sounds. So at this point, let's do activity two together. And what I'd like you to do is to listen to this clip and distinguish the vowel sounds that you hear. Um, so as you listen, what I would like you to uh, uh, think about is which words the man said uh, which showed uh, phonological influence from Spanish. The Italian man who went to Malta. One a day I'm going to Malta to big a hotel. In the morning I go down to eat a breakfast. I tell the waitress I want two pieces of toast. She brings me only one piece. I tell her I want two pieces. She say go to the toilet. I say you don't understand. I want to do piss on my plate. She say you better no piss on the plate, you son of a bitch. I don't even know the lady and she calls me a son of a bitch. Later, I go to eat at the bigger restaurant. The waitress brings me a spoon and a knife, but no fork. I tell her I want the fork. She tell me everyone want a fork. I tell her you no understand, I want a fork on the table. She say you better not fork on the table, you son of a bitch. So I go back to my room in a hotel, and there is no sheets on the bed. Call the manager yeah. and tell him I want a sheet. He tell me to go to the toilet. I say, you don't understand. I want a sheet on my bed. He say, you better not sheet on my bed, you son of a bitch. I go to the checkout and the man at the desk say, peace on you. I say, peace on you too, you son of a bitch. I'm going to back to Italia. Alevide. Okay, so before we talk about that, I want to go back a second and call your attention to these letters. So in English, we know that these would be eight, bat, above, and car. So each of these symbols would, rep would represent different sounds. However, um, how would a Spanish speaker pronounce each of these words, right? Each of the symbols in these words. If you remember in Spanish, A, this letter A, always represents the sound A. So they would probably um, state these or read these as at, bat, above, car. Okay? So knowing that, um, and having just watched that clip, and if, if you would like to uh, watch that one more time, um, feel free to uh, rewind uh, the video. So let's talk about which words showed um, phonological influence from the first language. And in, in Italian, um, it's the same case as in Spanish, where there are five vowel sounds, okay? And it's always A, E, I, O, U, uh, no matter where you see them in, in different words. So we saw that uh, it, uh, the I in it versus the E in eat, was being, um, was sort of a difficult word for the Italian man to distinguish, right? The sounds to distinguish. Um, so instead of big, he says big. The O and fork versus the A uh, and up, the U and up. Um, so instead of fork, right, he was saying a bad word. Uh, also, he had a, a sort of a, a difficult time distinguishing uh, the and then and da and den. Um, so instead of the, he says da, right? And so these difficulties that he's having phonologically, right, with these sounds are actually um, uh, transfers sound transfers from his first language, from Italian. So hopefully you were able to distinguish those. Um, and as I said before, we break up phonemes into two groupings. The first one is vowels, and the second one is consonants. 
and uh, we pr produce these consonant sounds by obstructing the flow of air as it passes from the lungs um, through the vocal tract. So that obstruction, uh, that obstruction takes place in different um, places in the mouth, which changes the sound, the consonant sound. It also um, uh, occurs in different manners. And then um, the voicing, our voice box, comes into play as well. So we're going to go over this next part uh, of consonants and see how place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing um, changes the different consonant sounds.